Ladies and gentlemen of the media, or the gentlemen of the media, welcome to the Orlando Pirates versus Morocco Swallows original derby post match press conference. We're joined by the away uh, coach, Coach Steve Compella. Welcome, Coach. Thank you, thank you, Sister. Uh, coach, if you may just give us a brief summary of the match from your perspective, please. I think first, congratulations to Orlando Pirates uh, for winning the match. They, they played a good match. And uh, we, we obviously came here with our own little challenges, of which I think we, we did well. We overcame them. Uh, coming, coming here and your squad, there's been five forced changes. You, you never expect the new inclusions to cope 90 minutes. And in my opinion, they did extremely well, irrespective of the, 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 the outcome. And when it comes to the match itself, I thought it was a it was a it was a very tactical match. Tactical in a sense that a lot of footballing components were were displayed, a lot of footballing questions were asked, and 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 uh, the benches and the coaches and the players tried their best to answer to those questions. In, in reference to that, you, you saw how Orlando Pirates made it difficult for us to build from the back because they know that we are, we are stubborn, insistent on building from the back, which I think we were well structured. And we, we never gave up our, our strategy or our, our model because we had changed the players, which then talks to you, you you, you, you have a structure and a system that talks to the team, irrespective who comes in or goes out. And Orlando Pirates coped and adapted to that. We also, also in my opinion, I think we were very successful in forcing them long. There were moments where a goalkeeper would want to start from the back. And we, we put a lot of bodies on top of their box and tried to see, will they be stubborn and insistent to come out? At some stages, they risked, and they could feel like, mm -mm, let's go for other options tactically. And when we put more numbers and bodies on top of their box, then it left us vulnerable on top, because you cannot put high pressure uh, without, without bringing your line along. Otherwise, you lose your compactness. But then, if a striker hangs on a goal kick, there's no way they would be offside. So we needed them to adapt to, okay, we are on top of their box and we're leaving one-on-ones on top. Are we prepared to leave Le Passa or any of their attackers alone with our centre backs? We we're brave enough to do that. But as soon as they touched the ball, it got to play. That centre back then dropped in halfway to apply the offside rule. That, to me, that was interesting. It's a small detail. But scholars of the game will, will observe that and say, okay, these people are intentional about what they are doing. These people know what they are doing and what they are doing is relatable to where the football game is going. And also with Orlando Pirates. So to me, that was the beauty of the match, which is what I said on my post-match interview that at the back of a defeat, it's rare to come out satisfied and pleased because what I saw in terms of application to me from the players we put in and from the opponent we played, they were talking the game, and which is a big challenge in a culture where as the game evolves, there's a reluctance from participants to evolve with the game. I'll cite an example. The, previously, the English game was all about crossing and finishing. If Paul Scholes had the ball, played it wide to David Beckham, we knew that the cross is coming. And as soon as the ball landed wide, the English supporter would be I mean, excited knowing that the cross is coming. But in no time, as soon as they realized that, wait a minute, it's no more about crossing and finishing. It's about build up, short interpasses, combinations, a back through, back foot receive and drive. All those, they immediately adapted to the evolution of the game. My biggest question to us as a nation and South Africans, are we ready to adapt? We are reluctant. South Africans are not quick to adapt to the trends of modern football. We tend to be rigid and we are stuck in old ways 
even when the game is moving. And we have to move fast if we have to improve the game. Not only players, not only coaches, not only the wonderful people sitting on the couches in front of me in terms of educating people, but everybody must then bring that element of, wait a minute, what's happening here? If you look at Mamelodi Sundowns, you learn a lot when they play. If you look at Orlando Pirates, you learn a lot when they play. If you look at Man City, you learn a lot. You look at Brighton, you learn a lot. You look at Xavi Alonso and all these folks. Now, all those components should not just be stuff that we watch on TV and see because the game is universal. Can we do them back home? Now, if you do that in South Africa, then they say, hey, hey, but hey, you're risking the thing. I was saying, of the teams that build from the back who are perceived to be at high risk of conceding goals, they are teams who've conceded the least number of goals. Before this match, we had conceded seven. Sundowns has conceded three. And Sundowns builds from the back. We build from the back. Two of the teams who build from the back, possession-based, have conceded the least number of goals. But somebody tell him, hey, hey why don't you, you risk in this? Those who, who don't risk, ne? who play route one, go direct, they are the ones who concede in the most. But then that should tell you something if you're a scholar of the game to say, no, man, wait a minute. Which means if I go along, it comes back quicker and you can step out. And when I build, then we are well, but you must be well structured when you build from the back. And everybody must be interconnected, knowing exactly, keep a first station pass. Where do you go? And if it goes there, what happens to everybody else? If these options are closed, what then do you do? All those aspects must be dealt with so that the game can grow. I saw those today. So part to this, as much as I'm talking a whole lot of other stuff around football, about football, th this game to me had a lot of aspects that I'll go back, watch it, and still say, okay, okay, I feel good about it, even though the results did not come our way. Then the second half, then the, 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 the right wing at Pirates was just, it was just coming and coming. And there's nothing as difficult as a left back playing against a right wing who's left footed who drifts inside, which was a major problem. And the culmination of the second goal was that, even though Basbambang Ali Kul, Basbambang Ayuk Sundowns, Gwem 10 8, and a Wuyo Pule foot, Sale, Yahu Sale, where he got on. I don't know whether the whole circumference of the ball was out or not, whatever, but he got in on the ball and brought the ball, it deflects off our defender. And second goal, from there it was very difficult for us to come back. But I'm happy with how we performed and I'm happy about the five players who went in. And I'm also very happy that what we keep working on as a team, as a group, we stuck to our guns. We've got two mics, please, by a short hand, I think by yourself, as well as uh, the media company you represent. We'll start here. Um, Apunchola, I had luck on the result and I, I think it's fitting that we continue um, with how you ended. Mm. Um, in this spirit of educating, um, what then do you say to say, well, then, well it's good to play from the back, um, because this is the philosophy that you've also adopted. Do you continue with it even when you're perceived as not having the right players? Um, to play that particular system? Yeah, players must know how to play from the back. And, and clearly, you, you have to improve players. And through positioning, understanding which pass has to follow, knowing when they're under pressure what to do, if they're not under pressure what to do, you try to give all these solutions to them. But at the end of the day, it's about them. They are going to take the decisions in a match. And we, we, we can't stop that because it's... We find it to be a sensible way of playing, more especially for African players. If you look at our team, uh, if we play long balls, how many of those balls do you think Abadino Mango can win from Nda, from CBC, from Koki? It's rare. Uzuma, how many of those balls can he win when we go long? Uh, Upachi, how many of those okay, cages very strong in the air? But then, do you have people to pick up second balls and all that? And, and, and which is where I'm saying, Velile, you, you have to play the game and in line with the kind of players you have. And African players, by nature, are highly technical. Uh, not unless you have a DJ Drogba who you know that you can launch, he holds up. And there are teams that are blessed in the country where they have players who are big, who can hold up play. 
but there are also teams that you can't play long when you know that you're going to give away possession because as soon as you play long, you are putting the ball for competition, it's 50-50. Now, between a center back and an attacker who's short, who's going to win that ball? You look at what Usipo did here. Yeah? Every time Pirates came long, Usipo Sibir was winning the balls because he's a big boy. And now, if he wins that ball, the midfield must then pick up the second balls. But I'm saying at Moroga Solos, the composition of your midfield as well. You did not have AJ, you did not have Barra, you did not have Umakuela, and you look at Ufan Ryan, the one who got in, Ustabezan. I mean, well, you can't expect this guy to be winning second balls and fighting for the ball. So all that you're saying is that, listen, let's start with the ball at the back, because we have technique, we can pass, we can move, and we have speed. The only thing that I think that Morocco Solos needs to start doing is to find a way to generate speed as soon as they have come out from, from a build-up, which is what I think Tottenham masters that very well. The change of tempo as they get into the midfield and going on a counter-attack. You, you create this counter-attack, and it's very, you'll find me very stupid to say you want to play on a counter while you're in possession. There's nothing like that. When you are in possession, you are playing. The only team who's going to play on a counter-attack is the one who regains possession. So then you have to create that artificial counter-attack whilst in possession. How do you do that? As soon as you build, on the sides where there's overloads, you try avoid and get to the other side that is underloaded. And we all know with less numbers, more space, there's a possibility of speed. Then you trigger a counter-attack. So these are all innuendos and things that we work on, work on. We'll work on them. They may not come out this season with us. They may come out after three years or four years. Or they may be then taught by the same players to their own teams as a coach because teaching and learning does not bring an immediate outcome. Certain things that you apply in your life are not things that you just learned. Instead, are things that you inherited from your educators long time ago. So we depend on that. We don't only coach, we also try to say to these players, as soon as you finish playing, have enough information that you can become coach as well. Final three questions. Coach Lorenzo, um, after the first few games you mentioned you wanted, I think, 10-10-10 from your front three, which was Zuma, Mango, and Mapasa mm. at the time. Um, I don't think Zuma is obviously bringing in those numbers. Um, you know, what's what's going wrong there with him? And obviously, before you arrived here, there were some issues off the pitch, and we know it's not gonna be fixed overnight. Um, is it affecting your your squad this season? No, not really. It's man management, and these are things that you deal with everywhere. And I'm definitely sure, I don't want to be controversial, even amongst us here, from your own media houses and everywhere else, even at our own homes where you come from, such things exist. And it would be highly hypocritical of me coming from a society that has the same aspects. When you experience the same phenomenon within your small intimate environment, then you are in denial that, no, 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 this cannot happen here. Because, unfortunately, we are we're just a microscopic reflection of society. If you're saying there's mental health issues in society, and you don't expect to have that within your football structure, you must be insane. It's impossible because those players come from that society, which is sick. So if you have a mental health issue in society, and don't expect to have it in football, you are living in a world that does not exist. Then you are, you, you are a hypocrite. If you say you advocate for mental health, that we have to take care of people and all this and all that, you are given a wonderful opportunity by the Almighty to say, I'm giving you people you can touch and deal with directly and deal with their mental health issues, and you neglect that. That's hypocrisy. So we are fully aware of that. Not in denial. When they exist, we talk about them. If they are not there, we keep working. So if and when something of that nature comes, whether it is with us or anywhere else, we have to deal with it. It's a fact of life. Everybody's going through hell these days because everything else is just here. You are living a life in the U.S. now. It's seated here. As soon as you switch on your phone, you check. Then you have a lot of information coming through, and then people are being shot, are being killed. It's in L.A. A crocodile is eating a human being. 
if you had never had that in your hands, you wouldn't be going through this hell. Because the world is in our pockets and just in front of us. We are going through hell. How do you avoid that? You can't. And if you are in denial thinking that, no, 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 it doesn't exist, you are a hypocrite. So we don't want to be like that. We accept and receive things as they happen. Be realistic and address them. That's what we do. We are very realistic. There's an ideal world. There's a real world. An ideal world is a perfect one. A real world is imperfect. Next question. Hi, man, I answered that question. <laughs> if you did not, go listen to the audio. You'll get to the answer there. Oh, I paralyze you. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it remind us our great Nelson Mandela. Coach, uh, two doubles in a row, and uh, you lost six points out of them. Ish. Um, that comes with some sort of uh, instability, because these are big games, not mm. just uh, ordinary games. Mm. How do you fix that, looking at the, the, the environment where your, your dress room finds itself? And still on the dress room, Coach, uh, can I please uh, restrict it to one question? The coach has answered three questions in 18 minutes. Mm. So can we restrict it to one question? Please? He talks too much. Uh, the coach talks too much. Thank you. <laughs> Am I asking? Uh, answering yeah, a question? Yeah, okay, what was the question, Shaba? Two dubbies, uh, okay? So he's got only one question? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I. I must, I must admit, it's not nice to be losing. And we have the desire to want to see Moroga Solos as a Moroga Solos that belongs to the big four. And for you to get to the level where you can box pound for pound, Morgan says it, with sundowns, pound for pound with chiefs, pound for pound with pirates, takes a lot, eh? Because they built and built and built and built. Not that we didn't build, but we've had our challenges in the past. And we are saying there's processing goals in everything that you work on in your life. The small steps that you take, you have to take positives whilst you know that mm, my desire is to reach the destination. But in between, there has to be milestones. It's just a pity that we lost last week against Chiefs. We're losing today against Orlando Pirates. And these are your pff, big, big, big four. They belong there. We're also trying to get there. Just have to go back and reflect with the players and also challenge them to say, listen, if we want to belong to the league of the big four, we, we have to up our game with our limitations. And also just bring out the positives to inspire them. In my opinion, showing them the game model, compare both matches, and look at how we concede these goals. Let's go to Chiefs. You saw how we conceded Leo Kouli. We could, we could have done better. The first goal against Orlando Pirates, we could have done better centrally. And the second goal, we could have done better. So when you look at those, you say, but in fact, all the goals we considered this year are goals that you say, but how did it come? How did it come? But it happens. So we have to learn fast. If we can manage to deal with that, then you'll win matches. Worst case scenario, you draw them. Final question. Thank you. Coach, Yes, Muscat, yes. So just picking up from your, I think, first or second answer. Too many. In, in terms of your build-up play. Mm. You pass the first line of confrontation. Mm. Your players then decide to go long for the cover mm. who's moving away from the box. Mm. How do you fix this situation, coach, where even with uh, the young boy, Van Ryan, okay? The passes that they would make, you mm. were too far from each other. Okay. And even when you cross into the box, there's no one because you are still very far. But you could get from the first line of confrontation, second one. Mm -hmm. but when you get up there, it's only two, three attackers but they are very far, and it doesn't give you the it, it, chances to score. It, it is the speed of entry in the final third. And I'm sure if, if we were to share with you clips and videos of the training sessions recently that we've been doing, it is, it is, it is predominantly to that. The creative zone and entering the final third. If we enter the final third wide, the opposite side has to step into the box. We need feet in the box. If we enter central, when we make those combinations, depending on how we want to unlock, then even on the side, we should be ready to receive, to play across and get to the end thereof. But Maskepe, to be honest with you, we can say these things and do them and do them and do them. The match is a different phenomenon. There's a, there's a simple instruction we had requested from 
from the players who go, okay, in our build-up play, we want to overload the midfield so that we can get the Pirates defenders answering the question of how do they deal with the overload in the midfield. And then when we do that, we want to see the reaction of the center backs. Can we stretch them wide enough that they open up the center? We can then have open the gates and move in. Just a request to a player to say, do that. We've been doing it at training. In a match, it's different. So sometimes you cannot fault our players for not doing things based on what you had been doing at training. But you understand that these are humans. But the only thing that you depend on is that only practice and practice and training and training can only perfect that. We'll work on that if the observation is right. Longer passes, higher risk of losing the ball. Shorter passes, they have to be intense and fast. And you can only do that when you have players with a high technical ability. And the beauty of playing close to one another is that as soon as the ball gets lost, you have an opportunity to counter press. So these are all things that we work on as coaches. And I'm going to tell them that you told me that they don't listen.